Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to cover a couple of questions in chapter two. So the first question is following. Uh, we have a nominal GDP in 2009, that is a $14 trillion and the real GDP is given as a $11 trillion. And the question asks you to calculate the GDP deflator. So I want you to record the formula and the GDP deflator is nominal GDP divided by real GDP. And I want you to record the relationship is always real equals nominal divided by price. So for example, real wage lowercase w is the same as uppercase w, that's the nominal wage divided by price level, okay? Now here, you just need to plug in the numbers then you can easily find the GDP deflator. So the numerator is a $14 trillion and the denominator is a $11 trillion, which gives you the 1.27. So the answer is a third one. Now the second question. This question is about the unemployment rate. And again, you need to record the formula and then the formula of the unemployment rate is the following. So the numerator is number of unemployed workers and the denominator is a labor force. And the labor force is number of the unemployed workers plus number of employed workers. So the question give you the unemployed workers here in this question is a 7 million. So the numerator is 7 million and the denominator, uh, we have uh, 7 million workers unemployed and the 143 million workers are employed. So that means that denominator is nothing but uh, one, sorry, the 7 million plus 143 million. So then that is a seven over 150 million each, okay? And then you multiply by 100, that's the unemployment rate, then it, it will give you the 4.7, okay? So the answer is the second one. Now move on. So take a look at this question. And then the question asks you to calculate the CPI. And this question is a little bit tricky. So you need to be very careful when you solve this question. So Abby consumes only apples. In year one, red apples cost $1 and the green apple costs $2 each. But Abby buys 10 red apples only. So let me highlight. She buys a 10 red apples, okay? Now year two, green apple uh, is a $1, but then the red apple, sorry, this green apple is a $1, and then the red apple is a $2, and now Abby buys a 10 green apples, okay? That's the situation that we have. Now, take a look at the first question. So we want to compute the CPI for apples for each year, and assume that the year one is a base year, and in which consumer basket is fixed. So what does it mean? What's the consumer basket there? Then this consumer basket, as you know, the Abby buys 10 red apples in year one, that's the basket. So the basket is uh, basket is uh, 10 red apples, okay? Now, given that we can find the CPI. So year one, the CPI is a $1 of the red apple and she buys a 10, so the CPI is a $10. But in the base year, CPI has to be one. So the answer for the CPI is just one. Then you can calculate the CPI for year two. In year two, red apple, the price becomes $2, right? So then $2 times a 10 red apple. So it's a $20. So as you compare this $10, $20, that's a double. So the CPI for year two is a two. Okay, so that means that CPI has double, okay? Now let's move to the question number B. Compute the Abby's nominal spending on apples in each year. Now you need to calculate the nominal spending. So the year one same, because she buys a 10 red apples, is just $10. But nominal spending in year two, because in year two, what happened? She buys a 10 green apples and the green apples is $10, right? I mean, the green apple is a $1 and the 10 green apples is a $10. So the answer is $10, okay? So then the nominal spending has stays the same. That's the answer. All right, so let's move to the next question. Another CPI and the GDP question. So in year one, an economy producer consumes, uh, produces and consumes two apples and two oranges, each for, each of which, uh, sorry, each of the which sell for four dollars. 
And then in year two, economy produces and consumes of four apples, which still sells for $4. And then one orange, which sells for $12. So orange, dollar, orange price is a drastically increase from the $4 to the $12. And then year one is a base year. Now, year one, we want to calculate the nominal GDP. So two apples and then uh, the apple price is $4 and two oranges and the orange price is $4. So $2 times $4, two times $4 plus two times $4, that is 16, okay? So the real GDP in base year is the same as the nominal GDP. So it's a 16 two. Now, year two, nominal GDP, so year two, they produce of uh, four apples and then the price of the apple is still $4, but they produce uh, one orange only. But what do you see? Orange price is $12, so this is a 12, okay? One times 12. So then the $16 plus $12, that's 28. So the nominal GDP in year two is a 28. But then the real GDP, you are using the year one's price. So that means, this apple's price stays the same, but then the apple, uh, the orange price, you need to use, instead of 12, you need to use a $4, which is a year one's price. So that means a four, four times a $4 and one orange plus, uh, one orange times a $4. So then together is a 16 plus four is a 20. So real GDP in year two is a $20, okay? Now, uh, the following question asks you to, find the inflation. One is using the GDP deflator and the other one is using the CPI. So again, the GDP deflator is nominal GDP over real GDP. And year two, we calculate the real GDP is a 20 and the nominal GDP is 28. So that is a 1.4, okay? So then the GDP defla deflator in year one is a one. And from the one to one to 1.4 to the year two is an increase by the 0.4, that is a 40% increase, okay? Or you can calculate the 1.4 minus one over one times 100, then you can calculate the inflation rate by using the GDP deflator uh, is a 40%, okay? Now you do the same thing, but now with the CPI, so let's calculate the CPI. Year one, CPI is two, uh, or it's, what was it? Uh, two apples times a four dollars plus two dollars, two orange times a four dollars. So that is a 16. But year two, you are using the same basket. So two apples and two oranges, but then the prices are different. So this is now four dollars, but the orange price becomes twelve dollars. So that is eight plus 24, that gives you the 32. What do you see? It's a double. That means a CPI is 100%, okay? 32 minus 16 over 16 times 100, then you can see that that is 100%, okay? Now the last question here, a partial index in, tends to the understate uh, the inflation where the last virus index is overstate, in, overstate inflation, okay? So I want you to read the textbook uh, to, under, to cover this partial index and the last virus index. Now we have a last question here, which is the following. So basically this question asks you to calculate the unemployment rate and let's check the one by one. So here, an economy has 100 people working full time and 20 people working half time and the 40 people looking for work. That means that 40 people, they didn't get a job and 20 people who would like to work but have given up looking for a job. So this is on, so discourage the workers. And then 20 retires and then 30 children. So first question, number of the employed, well, it's a combination of the full time and the half time. So 100 plus 20, that gives you 120. So that's the number of the employed workers. And then the number of the unemployed, you see that that's a 40, right? And you may think that what about these 20 people who would like to work but have given up looking for a job? So they are not unemployed workers. They are discouraged workers. It's not part of the labor force, okay? So be careful. And then the question number C, the size of the labor force, like I told you, number of employed plus number of unemployed. That being said, 120 plus 20, that is a one, uh, sorry, 120 plus is 40, right? Because the question number B, 
we found that number of the unemployed is 40, so it should be 40. And together, the answer is a 116. Then the unemployment rate is number of unemployed divided by labor force. That means that 140, sorry, the 40 over 160 times 100, that is uh, 25%. Okay. Now the last question, labor force participation rate, by definition, that is a labor force over the other population. Okay. Labor force, we calculate that 160. Now, what about the other population? Well, except for these children, there are 200 other people, others here because 100 plus 20 plus 40 plus 20 plus 20, that is 200, okay? I mean here, labor force plus 20 retires and 20 people who give up, give up to uh, get a job is a 20, right? So the together is 200. Then this is a uh, 80%, okay? When you multiply by 100. All right, so that's it.